All right, so I'm gonna do a quick section for you here on some special considerations that you have when you're roofing a hip section of roof like this. So this is the end of the hip. You've got two slanted ends. You don't have a nice uh, squared off gable end from which you could start your pattern and run your shingles up and over on. So to roof an area like this, you kind of have to create a, a, a reference line that's gonna be your straight line or your gable end, and then you're gonna use that to roof, roof off in either direction from. So let's just say, if you can imagine with me, that this was a just one side of a, a hip roof and this roof extended out and there was a straight flat gable end over there. Well, that's where you'd probably want to start unless you had a lot of chimneys or dormers or something in the way that was going to mess up your pattern. You want to start off that way and just run this way and then you just run off to the end and cut your shingles off. But in this case, we've got this triangular section and we need to establish a basis for starting our pattern. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit subscribe so you can be a part of my channel. You can watch all my videos that cover complete stages of both shingle and metal roofing. There's tons more content coming out soon about all aspects of roofing, including skylights and trim and sheds and whatever you're interested in. So the first thing we're going to do is just establish a line and it's going to go from the, the peak of the ridge here where the two hips come together right down into the middle of this triangle. So this is easy because our model's real small. I'm just going to pull a tape across this, find the middle, mark that, and then snap a line between here and there. And that's going to establish what's called the bond line. And then we're going to use that to uh, establish where the starter shingle starts and then also where the, the shingle pattern starts and work up from that. So using the ridge, the peak here to start with is a good reference and I just say that you kind of want to start your bond line as, as close to the hip side as you can. You wouldn't want to start it further out because as you'll see when we're weaving the shingles in it's a little more difficult because we're going to have to bring some shingles in from the left and they're going to go under the shingles so that's kind of a more of a pain than working the shingles out so I think it'll make sense in a second. So just start as close to the edge as you can and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and snap that line and we're going to get going with the starter shingle. I established my line here in silver. We've got the starter shingle, top of the starter shingle marked off here to have the correct reveal over the edge. And what I've done here is created a line six inches off the side of the bond line here, which is the middle, the middle silver line that you see. So, and that's where I'm gonna start my starter shingle. Okay, and the reason I wanna offset the starter shingles, just like we explained when we're, you're establishing your pattern and setting your starter shingle up, is because we don't want, we're gonna put our first full shingle on this line, and we don't want the butt joints of the starter shingle and the, the, the field shingle to line up. So the six inches allows us to, uh, to offset that. So we're gonna go ahead and get this run, and then run our full, excuse me, our first full shingle based on this silver uh, bond line running up the middle of the hip. You can see we've got our starter shingles on, we've got the starter shingle offset from the butt joint of the first full course, and really what you could do is start with the first full course and run it all the way down in either direction because nothing's really going to change based on that. The second shingle, we're going to offset just six inches in this direction. Now, I'm showing you a pattern that's going to work with both three-tab shingles and architectural shingles. If you were doing three-tab shingles and you knew how to rack shingles going up, we've also got this line here, you could just easily rack them, that'd be an easy way to do it, but I want to show you this way because it'll work for both three tabs and architects. So we're really just going to create that same pattern where we go six inches off each way. So as an example, what we're going to do is set this one like this. And each other course is going to go like this, six inches further over that way, okay? So the thing that you have to remember when you're doing this is that you need to leave the last nail here out because the shingle that comes underneath it is going to need to be nailed after you've already put the shingle in place. So it'll become obvious if you, obvious, and if you make that mistake, you're going to have to take the nail out because you won't be able to get the shingles in there. But So we're go, going to go ahead and run these with this pattern, six inch offsets going up here, and uh, then we'll, we'll have everything taken care of. 
All right, so I got several courses on here. And again, our model's pretty small to demonstrate this, but I think this is gonna give you the ideas. We started the stair step, it's going over this way. Because it's so small, the shingles cover most of it just with just one three foot you know, piece of shingle. But as you can see over here, what we've gotta do now is slip this course under these other ones. And this is why you have to leave that other nail out is because when you come back in now, you gotta put the nail in this shingle that we've already nailed over here. Same thing here, we're gonna slip this course up under here, nail it here, and so on. So if you have a larger roof with this kind of configuration, you're gonna have a lot more courses. But what you wanna do is run this course, run a full shingle to the right, run the shingles to the left, and then start moving up. So I'm gonna finish this off and we'll, we'll have the side of this hip done. All right, so we just went ahead and filled in the, the rest of the field shingles here to the left and nailed the tab behind it to the right and all the way up to the top. And you can see, and when you see the next section on installing the ridge and the hip cap shingles, you'll see the hip caps are gonna cover a lot of this. So you don't have to worry too much about it. We obviously needed to put some nails in places that you wouldn't normally put a nail in the shingle, but all of this is gonna get covered up by the ridge and the hip cap shingles when it's all done. And we're gonna finish it off. All right, in this section, I'm going to be showing you how to apply the cap shingles to both the hip and bridge sections. So to finish off these sections of your roof, you're going to use the same cap shingle. Uh, you have a few options as to which type of, of shingle that you're going to use for this. No matter which variety of cap shingle you use, they're applied with the same technique. Your most basic option for hip and ridge shingles is to use a three-tab shingle. If you're using a three-tab on the rest of the roof, like we are here, this is going to be your easiest option because you're going to have some on hand. You can also use a three-tab shingle for the hip and ridges on an architectural shingle roof if a matching color of three-tab shingle is available. To make a three tab shingle into a ridge shingle, you need to make just a few cuts. Take your razor knife and hook blade and cut the shingle into three tabs right at the cutout. Once you've got a stack of three tabs, you want to come back and trim off the back corners of each shingle, or you can do it as you go along. You'll end up with a piece that looks like this with slightly beveled edges on the back and side of the shingle that's gonna get covered up. This prevents the back end of the shingle from sticking out around the edges of the overlapping shingle. Now, depending on the shingle manufacturer and what your supplier carries, you may be able to use a product like these that are specifically manufactured to be used as hip and ridge shingles. There are a variety of products depending on the manufacturer and the color that you use, so you'll have to check and see what's available. These products are nice because they come pre-cut and have color patterns that are designed to make the shadow lines really stand out. In some cases, if you're using an architectural shingle you have to use one of these pre-made hip and ridge shingles as matching three tab shingles are not available. Applying these shingles is pretty straightforward. Your main considerations are to make sure that you're using a nail that's long enough and to run the shingles in a straight line. Let's start on this hip. I like to apply the first hip shingle to make sure it's square and even on both sides of the ridge. In this case, the you know every tab that you're gonna use for your hip and ridge are gonna be one foot wide. So really you're gonna fold it and it's six inches on either side. So once you kind of eyeballed it and make sure everything's gonna work, you can make marks just on one side of the hip now, six inches from the middle of the hip. We're gonna make two marks, snap a line, and then that's gonna guide the right side of the shingles as we go up. So just like in the field, hip and ridge shingles get a five inch reveal. So you lay the top shingle where it laps just over this glue line here. Place two nails in the hip shingle in the middle of the tab in essentially the same place as you would in field shingles.
So when you reach the top of your hip, be careful to hide the nails on your lash shingle as it transitions into the ridge section. You may end up having to have some face nails that will need a bead of seal and a roof cement applied over top. It's hard to say just depending on the configuration and the geometry of your roof. Um, see, we had to cut a, cut a little tab here and put over it and face nail it here and here. But actually in this case, when we get these cap shingles on coming up this hip and the ridge shingles, I think all of these uh, face nails that we put in are gonna be covered. If you'd like the complete series for yourself on how to do shingle or metal roofing, you can go to my website, roofingintelligence.com, and there you can get a membership to either stream or you can get a DVD in the mail. It'll show you how to do all the steps for either of those types of roofing. Enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching.